Hi guys, Mike here at Safer Training Solutions. Now I'm just doing this video here to give you some information on something that has come about which could have very serious implications for you and your organization. So I'm just going to share this with you now. Now any of you guys who've done training with us before know that we put a lot of emphasis on risk assessments, identifying known risks, identifying potential risks, and putting measures in place to try and mitigate those risks as much as possible. And that is a legal requirement under the Health and Safety at Work Act. Uh, your employer has a duty of care towards you, you have a duty of care to, for yourself and other colleagues, and there's also a duty of care to those not in your employment, so that would be service users, uh, children at the school, etc. So I want to draw your attention to this. Now this is a very, very, very important uh, court case that happened here. This is going to have massive implications for what you do at your facility. Now this is a school, but this could be a care home, it could be a, a shopping centre, it could be absolutely anywhere, but it relates here to a school and it says, Council fined after teacher assaulted by pupil. Luton Borough Council has been sentenced after a teacher was assaulted by a pupil. It says on the 17th of June 2016, the assistant head teacher at Putteridge High School was called to deal with a disruptive pupil who was refusing to go into a detention room. After clearing the classroom of the other pupils, the pupil launched a sustained assault on the teacher using a mobile phone and inflicting life-changing injuries. The HSE's investigation found that there were significant shortcomings in relation to the measures at the school regarding violence and aggression posed by the pupils to others. No effective consideration was given to the risk of injury or death posed by the pupils to others and measures were not taken to reduce that threat to as low as reasonably practicable. It says according to the HSE, Luton Borough Council did not ensure that the school had people with sufficient competence in the management of health and safety involved in running the school to ensure that the threat was addressed. The council did not see to it that staff members at the school had the training either to remedy that shortcoming or to deal with violent and aggressive pupils in a way which did not expose them to risk. The council failed to monitor the adequacy of the measures Putridge High School had in place and the council therefore failed to pick up and address the shortcomings. And here's the killer. Luton Borough Council of Town Hall, Upper George Street, Luton, pleaded guilty to breaching Section 2, brackets 1 of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. And if you have done training with us, you know there's a whole section on the Health and Safety at Work Act and why it's very, very important that we know about it and we observe it. It was fined £104,000 with £60,000 costs. It says the fine was reduced from £300,000 due to the council's lack of revenue as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So that's a local authority that's received that fine, but it doesn't just have to be a local authority. That could be an independent school, an independent care home, any type of independent business. The Health and Safety at Work Act, if it gets breached, and it's a flagrant breach, and it shows and it can be proved that the organisation did not take adequate steps to mitigate the risk, any risk that was posed, you can see here that there was obviously a, a risk assessment was not undertaken. A suitable and sufficient assessment of the risk of that particular pupil was not undertaken. So that means that the teacher was exposed to unnecessary risk. That's why they've received a massive fine. It says, her, judge, her Honour Judge Mensa in sentencing said, there is no doubt in my mind that this was a properly brought prosecution not to have brought a prosecution in this serious case would, apart from anything else, have sent a completely wrong message to the school, its governors, the staff and pupils, other local authorities with responsibilities under the Education Act and to the public generally. It says this was a large organisation which to a very large extent relied on employees conducting the day-to-day -day running of the school as it could not and did not have complete control over the daily function of the school. However, I am satisfied that the systems that were in place were inadequate and oversight by the, by the local authority was light. Now, there are problems within schools with staffing levels. I am completely and utterly aware of that. I hear it all the time and it's a legitimate gripe. It's a legitimate concern, especially in special educational needs departments. However, 
this is where we've got to start thinking outside of the box because if you are a head teacher or governors of school or anything like that, then this is what you are now facing. This is now a benchmark case. Every single case will be set against this one. They'll refer to this one. So you want to make sure that you do not fall foul of this. So you've got to adapt the way you work. And I'm here to help you do that. I can help you do that. Whether you're a school, whether you're a care home, whether you're an agency or something like that, we can help you do this. One of the ways that we can do this, and I advocate this on the online learning or and face-to-face -face learning, and when we do risk assessments, is doing a suitable and sufficient assessment of risk to identify that risk. And if we identify any risk, then what we can do is we can put adequate systems in place to try and counter that risk. So, for example, if we are um, working one-to-one -one with a uh, service user, a pupil, and there is a risk for aggression and violence, then we've got to have one, that person not working on their own with that uh, pupil or that service user. But if they are going to be working on their own, there needs to be systems in place to ensure that should aggression or violence rear its ugly head, that person is not on their own with that person for any significant time. So it's about managing the environment, managing the way we do things, ensuring that certain staff members are rotated at certain times, ensuring that those staff members who are with that potentially a violent aggressive person they're not too far away from other staff members at that crucial time should they need some help so systems in place in some schools they use pupils to go and get uh, assistance from another um, classroom from another teacher their radios things like that now they're all good things they are really good things however they are secondary control measures the first thing is we've got to identify, is that person in the right place in the first place? And if we have got them in the in the classroom environment or in an open environment, if it's a care home, are we then exposing other children or service users to, uh, to uh, unnecessary risk? If it is that we've identified that there is a risk and we are now exposing them, that now, if, it, if it's foreseen, that we might need to physically intervene, that becomes a planned intervention. That cannot be described as an emergency intervention. That is a planned intervention if we have previous knowledge that this is likely to happen. So if it's a planned intervention, anyone who inspects against this, if it happens, will be looking for the risk assessment to accompany it because they will say there must be a risk assessment because you knew of the risks. The other thing that we can do, and the best thing that we can do, so all of the other stuff mentioned is good, but the best thing to do is to get more people trained. Because if this was, if is, if this is likely to happen, then what we've got to do is we've got to make sure there are adequate numbers of people trained in correct uh, 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 management of aggression techniques, but also worst case scenario, correct. Uh, manual handling and physical intervention techniques, safe holding techniques. That would be the best thing to do because instead of that person who's working one-to-one -one with that person waiting for ages for assistance, then they don't have to wait too long because if you've got more staff members trained, they're going to be with that person a lot, lot quicker. And if they are waiting for a significant amount of time, then we're going to end up with a situation like this where the person is going to be fined £300,000 because they're getting seriously injured or worse, they're dying because it can happen. So we need to take this extremely seriously. So what I can do is I can help you with this. I can help you get more of your staff trained. And this is definitely what you need to do. So I can speak to you or you can speak to me and we can come to an arrangement on getting more people trained. We can come to arrangements on uh, timings that everyone is as safe as possible. So I will do you a fantastic deal on making sure that as many of your staff are trained as, as, as suitably trained as possible. So as you can see there with what's happened is some serious implication there, some serious money and the courts aren't messing around, especially if you cannot show to them your due diligence. Again, we're looking at emergency interventions, planned interventions. The courts aren't silly. They're going to go back and they're going to look at your previous records, previous data, risk assessments, etc. So it's all about you showing that you did everything you possibly could to ensure that that incident didn't happen. 
And like I say, the best way to do that is to ensure you've got an adequate amount of staff trained in physical intervention techniques, management of aggression techniques, and also that we're adopting the other management strategies. So adapting our environment, making sure that people don't have to wait too long for other colleagues to come and assist them, all those kind of things. So, And obviously I'm here to help you. So if you do need any help with regards to anything like that, any risk assessments or any other advice or guidance, I'm always here for you guys. So call me, uh, email me, whatever you need to do, and I'll be there for you. Thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to watch this video. Take care. Bye-bye.